The FOMC minutes did come out today, and it looks like they're doing exactly what they told us. 75 basis points, which is looking like it caused a little bit of a bounce in the TLT, so we want to pay attention to that, see if those yields do rise a little bit more before this inflation report coming out on Thursday, January 11th. Now, we are going to get into some technical analysis for the SPY queues, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, and NVIDIA today, so let's get right into it. Despite today actually getting some downward pressure, almost 1% down, 0.82% down on the day on the close. We are holding up above that 20-day moving average, and we are really expecting price to hold up at this level. Now, this level just tells you, hey, we could get a bounce from here, right? We do see a little bit of liquidity in here. Maybe we do set up some kind of right shoulder, so we'll really be paying attention if we do get some kind of bounce to this high here. So it's just something to pay attention to. And we do land back within these zones, right, in between these purple zones, 68% of the time by the end of the week. So a bounce from this level would make a lot of sense. And we're going to go into the shorter time frames and see how possible that could be. Okay, so going into the two hour, we do see we're outside of that weekly range. We do like to close back within this 68% of the time. So we could see a bounce from this level, right, where we're talking about this head and shoulders possibly setting up. So we want to pay attention to it at this point. Now on the daily, you do have that sell signal. It looks like we flipped to the bear side, but we could see a bounce from this level. I just wanted to point that out. Now how we would see this actually play out is if we get some kind of gap fill and then we do get um, some bad news or maybe we do just get continued selling because nothing has really changed at this point we do get more data drops throughout the week so we want to pay attention mostly to Friday okay so what I'm going to be paying attention to is going to be Friday the PMI comes out on Friday they like to use that and the non-farm payrolls is going to be pretty dang important this week and it's something to pay attention to as far as Friday goes so do we see this continue to break down or do we get some kind of bounce to create, you know, a, a right shoulder? That's overall what I'm paying attention to on a two hour. And the reason that I'm saying that is because if I just, you know, let me erase some of these drawings and go into a 15 minute. When we do get these divergences um, down at overextended levels, you can see bounces. So if we do see a little bit more selling into tomorrow and then we gain some ground back, um, maybe there is just some positivity, maybe some data comes out, things like that could happen. And you notice that we are starting to kind of taper sideways, right? We did actually have a little bit of a trend here and we're starting to break that trend. Um, we did go back within it. So if this trend is broken again, I'm going to be a little bit more convinced um, that we are going to see that bounce. So it's just something we have to pay attention to because 68% of the time we do land within this zone. But it's uh, overall on the daily, we have uh, flipped to the bear side, but we're holding up above the 20. So it's kind of still a time to be a little bit like, hey, we could go back and forth. But the 15 minute is in that negative territory. So we could see some continued selling if we remain in that pot, in that negative territory. So if we do see continued selling and get some kind of bounce, you're going to notice that we would have that divergence at the same time on the MACD and the RSI. So this bounce that happened as of today, you know, we want to pay attention to that. You notice that there was a divergence down here on the RSI, but we did not necessarily have that on the MACD at the same time. We actually came a little bit lower on the MACD, which just tells you, hey, we could be experiencing some kind of pullback. And that's all I should take it for on the 15 minute. So if we do head to lower levels and get some kind of bounce, then you would have that at the same time. And you do have that 68% chance to land in this purple zone, maybe creating some kind of right shoulder. Now, we don't want to put all our eggs in the bounce basket for the SPY because the queues actually are closing below the 20, and that just tells you, hey, we could head towards that 50 pretty quick, which sits right in that liquidity zone that we really like. And we are closing outside of this weekly range, which we told you, you know, 68% of the time we do bounce up and land back within this zone. But the other percentage of the time when you do close outside of these ranges, especially two days in a row, you can see more dramatic things happen in the market. So that's something we have to pay attention to as of right now, and it really looks like we do want to go at least test that 50 come into this liquidity maybe gain some buyers and then we'll have to talk about some kind of bounce from there something interesting to point out if we wanted to go get an all-time high on the spy the queues might actually struggle to make that happen if you remember I, th I think it was a couple months ago we did notice that the queues were actually getting a lower high um, while the SPY was actually making a higher high. So if the SPY actually does come up and get some kind of new all-time high and the queues don't necessarily confirm that, that would be something to pay attention to and I will notify you about that on this channel.
We are seeing that sell signal. My signals have flipped to bearish on the queues. Okay, that's very, very obvious at this point. We're closing below the nine, we're closing below the 20. That is a very bearish signal. We cut below the previous low. So it's something to pay attention to. If you notice, we didn't really lose this even on the two hour very often. We didn't lose this 50, right? We didn't lose the 50 on the two hour, but right now we are losing the 50 on the two hour and we're not seeing structure like we did over here. We're actually seeing more dramatic selling. So this could just continue and maybe we do go test the monthly. Maybe we do cut below that, come down and touch that 50 on the daily. So that's just something to pay attention to right now. And I just wanted to show you the 15 minute on this. You don't necessarily have divergence on the MACD and the RSI at the same time. So we do get some more selling in this and then that sets up. I'll be talking about it most likely tomorrow if that does set up. So we just want to pay attention to this, but you can see more dramatic selling outside of those weekly ranges. Um, even though 68% of the time you do land back within this range, when you do close outside Side of it consistently, it's a good sign that we could head to lower levels and see something more dramatic happen. So it's something to pay attention to at this point. And we're going to see if we're able to get some kind of bounce over the next couple of days. Apple here we were paying attention to, and this really did give us a good hint of all this selling that's coming. So congratulations if you did find this move in Apple. You just see that divergence at the same time, and we mentioned that right up here. Um, so it is a very, very good trade. We were telling you to pay attention to right around here because that's the weekly expected move. We're outside that, and we can see more dramatic selling. So just on the daily here, I wanted to point out um, you notice that the two latest bars, we had this low and we had this high, and now we have a lower high as of today and a lower low with those wicks. So we want to pay attention because more dramatic selling can come, and we really want to pay attention to that January 11th, see if that uh, inflation data actually comes out as good news for the market, which is kind of what I see. Now, some people have, I've been looking and some people do have some prediction that is going to actually be you know, tick up. And I just want you guys to decide for yourself. So here's that core inflation rate month over month, 0.3, but look at this, it's coming in at 0.3 or 0.2. So I don't necessarily see that at this point. Um, and then you have 4%, the core inflation rate year over year, and that's at 4%, and maybe it comes in at 4% again. Will people see an even rating as good news for the market, or were they expecting this to come down? That's what I want to pay attention to. And then the inflation rate month over month is the only one that really the consensus is it's going to tick up a little bit. So it's something to really pay attention to. And I think this data is going to be very important in the near future. It's important to point out that on the two hour, we are getting into those low territory, right? So if we do see some kind of bounce and that rolls over, takes out this low, we will continue that negative trend and most likely make a new low. So that is something to pay attention to at this point on the two hour. We do have that potential for a bounce, but maybe this comes in as resistance. You guys know that when we like to break through a zone, we like to test it one more time and then see some more dramatic selling come in. So that's something to pay attention to on the two hour. Just wanted to bring up the 15 minute. It's getting up towards that positive territory okay so we're seeing this kind of build back up towards the positive territory now this could be some kind of flagging to head lower but if that does want to head lower where would we start to see that 15 minute maybe even a 30 minute divergence well we would head to lower levels and maybe we do find an area down in here to create some kind of 15 minute divergence that would show up on the MACD and the RSI at the same time you notice these divergences down here on the RSI you didn't necessarily have divergence I guess you had a small one right here on the MACD at the same time produced a little bit of a bounce which is what you should expect from the 15 minute so i'm going to mainly be pointing out if i see divergences um, at the end of this week on a 30 minute or an hourly or a two hour because those are a lot more sturdy and you can see you know potential short-term reversals and trend from those divergences Amazon yesterday, we were just stating how it does have that divergence up here on the MACD, but it doesn't necessarily have that on the RSI at the same time. So this could be a pullback to go into some liquidity to find some buyers. And as of today, we're seeing that wig down. We're getting a closing bar, a pretty firm closing bar below the 20, which tells you it might want to go test that 50 pretty quick. So if we do see this tested before that January 11th, we're really going to have to pay attention to that data. If we're at these extended sold off levels and we do see a tick up in inflation, we can get more dramatic selling. But if that comes in kind of as expected, people could see that as good news. The narrative of the job is done could come back in and we could see one more push, maybe to make some kind of lower high while the spy actually makes a higher high and goes into that new all time high. So that's something to pay attention to over the next couple of weeks. January is going to be a very very, very interesting month. We said that before it even started, and it looks like we do want to head into this liquidity in Amazon to maybe find some buyers, and then we'll decide what happens with that inflation data.
Important to note that we are getting to those oversold territories on the two hour and we're getting to deep levels in the MACD, right? So we're getting into the negative territory. So if we get even deeper into negative territory because we can remain oversold for quite some time. And this really is barely oversold at this point. So if we want to remain oversold, that can happen for quite some time. So we really want to pay attention to this at this point as it is coming into this liquidity zone we've been targeting. Um, see if we can get some kind of bounce. See if we can get this to roll back up and do positive territory very soon. Now, if this does want to roll up right now, we would be looking if that's able to cross back down. If that's able to cross back down, that's really going to confirm we're in a negative trend. Um, right now, we are in a negative trend on the two hour because we're in negative territory. But if we actually flag out and then see another one, we can actually see more dramatic selling. Now, after that happens, we'll have to pay attention to January 11th, see if this is able to get back into positive territory. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. Now, this is what I posted on my Patreon. We were talking about how there is actually a divergence up here on the RSI, but not necessarily the MACD at the same time. I really like that crossing of the MACD and then coming back up to see that divergence. But something did develop today, and I said we're breaking through this level. So if we want um, to actually see some buying back up, we would need to close back above this trend to see a continued push move. We could get some kind of retest as of tomorrow. That's something we want to pay attention to because we have that data coming out on Friday. But since this is breaking at this point, I notified you on Patreon and said, hey, let's let's really pay attention to those weekly expected moves, which actually lies right around you know this bottom of this range that we broke out of to go higher. So that's something to pay attention to. You notice that the 50 is right below us and the 200 is right below us. This would be a great, great source of support coming forward. Really pay attention to um, Tesla if it is able to actually get into negative territory. That's when you see the really dramatic selling coming. If we do get some kind of retest looking at the two hour on Tesla, you'll notice that we are well within negative territory. So if we do get some kind of retest and that is able to roll back over, look for this to pop up, maybe remain in negative territory. That would be a good chance that we are going to actually take out this low and head to lower levels. So I'm really, really liking uh, this level of 230 to 232 for some kind of bigger bounce. Um, so that's something to pay attention to. But if we start to break below this level, we haven't broken below that level in quite some time. And if we do break below that level, I'd really think we're going to go target the bottom of that big triangle that Tesla has been in for quite some time. Nvidia, some development since yesterday, we were stating how it's very important to keep that trend because if we keep this trend, that just means, hey, we could see some kind of bounce upward. But because we actually have lost that trend at this point, you're getting a good close below the 20. The 50 is right there, so we could see some support as of tomorrow. And we really want to pay attention to this, but it really looks like we are going to test the bottom Bollinger before that happens. So if you're part of the Patreon, I'd really pay attention to the downside of that weekly expected move. Pay, look at the price action when we do get outside of that and see if there are some divergences, but we did cross on this MACD and we're very close to negative territory. Okay, so if this starts to get into negative territory, kind of like Tesla, that's when the more dramatic selling can come in. And we might be doing some kind of ABC pattern, right? We might be doing some kind of ABC pattern to head to lower levels, which is going to uh, actually this, uh, this little ABC pattern would start to test the bottom of the monthly expected move. So that's what we really want to pay attention to at this point. I think you really want to pay attention to this low. And if it is broken, I'd really be looking at this zone. And that's mainly what I am leaning towards in the near future. We covered it yesterday. I'm going to talk about AMD. And overall, we were just saying this is barely a red bar with some dramatic selling down here on the histogram of the MACD. So we can kind of assume there would be more, more selling um, on AMD today. And that was kind of my hint of the overall market. We could see more dramatic selling to at least the next day because we just got one tiny crossing of this MACD. We might want to pull back to lower levels. As of right now, you're closing right at this bar, right at this low. So if we do want to see some kind of bounce, that would make a little bit of sense. See if this bounce is able to hold, right? Because if we do start to break below this trend here, it's a very good sign we're going to come into this liquidity pretty quick. Right now on the two hour, we are getting some flagging on AMD. So that is something to pay attention to. But what I want to pay attention to is the fact that we're on the MACD, right? We're getting we're getting pretty low on the MACD. We're getting into that negative territory. So if we do see some buying up at this point and we do roll back over and break through this trend, we're probably going down into this zone. OK, I just wanted to state that because we could have some kind of big head and shoulders in here, left head and right shoulder to break down to lower levels. So that's what I'm going to be paying attention to in AMD. And if we do get some kind of bounce tomorrow, I'd really pay attention to that data on Friday.
Yields, we are still crossed on the MACD. That's pretty important, right? And um, we're not necessarily making a new low at this point. So that is something to pay attention to, right? The low is pretty deep at this point. So you're just getting some inside trading. Maybe this does want to consolidate with some more data over the next couple of days. So that is something to really, really pay attention to. We really think that these yields are going to start to head higher. I really do think that these yields are going to start to head higher um, because the Fed didn't necessarily change their tone. That could just tell us, hey, with some with some push from some data, we could actually see this start to go up. And that means very, very bad things for, for at least tech stocks. Yesterday, the VIX is seeing that fear start to stay a little bit higher. We were stating yesterday, hey, you know, we could see more selling to, uh, the next day, meaning yesterday we mm -hmm. said you could see more selling today. That would be tomorrow, yesterday. Um, just because this is a fear indication and you notice that we did peak out and we started to see that fade, meaning the fear is not necessarily in this market, right? So that just means people don't believe that we could see further pullbacks. We're starting to see these Bollinger Bands spread out. Just means that volatility can come back into this market over the next few days. We really have to pay attention to January 11th at that point. And just to notify you that weekly on the VIX has not crossed yet. Okay, I'm going to just notify you, right? We're just going to point out when this actually happens. So I want to point it out to you every single day. That way you do notice when this does happen. Most likely if we do see some, you know, push up higher in the VIX, maybe to come up to this 50 on the weekly, that's what I'll be paying attention to if we start to see that fade next week and not be able to cross on this MACD. That would be a good sign that we are going to see some kind of bounce. But if this does cross and get into positive territory, we're going to most likely see the VIX hold a positive trend for quite some time in 2024 could mean that we are heading into another bear market. Those yields did come a bit down from its peak today, right? So that's what we need to pay attention to. But you'll notice that, you know, HYD didn't necessarily buy up as much as you would like. So really, this is still gapping down. Um, it's still closing above the 20, which is good news for the high yield growth. But this could be signaling that, hey, this is just some kind of minor bounce. And we're actually going to head to lower levels. So I want to just pull up an hourly real quick, show you guys how it is flagging, right? So we are kind of flagging at an upward trajectory at this point, and we could could see this sell again. So this is just something to pay attention to. We're in that negative territory. And if I even go into like a 30 minute, you're really going to see, hey, there's no divergence here or anything like that. So I can't confidently say like, yes, this is going to rip higher. Um, the 30 minute is actually telling me, hey, this might curl over one more time to create a divergence first. So that's what I want to pay attention to. If I go a little deeper into a 15 minute, you'll kind of see this curving of the MACD, which tells me this really wants to roll over in negative territory, take out this low and head to lower levels which when that happens, we really do see more selling in the market. So we want to pay attention to this going forward. If we do get some kind of bounce in the SPY or something like that tomorrow, and then we actually see this heading to lower levels, the SPY might try to catch up and we might get some data that actually pulls us down to lower levels in the overall market. So the overall takeaway from this video is we are seeing some negative trends, right? We're seeing negative trends on those shorter time frames. So we have to be, you know, prepared for any potential downside, but we are in a slight area where we could see a bounce. Um, I think there might be some more selling to get into those little bit better liquidity zones before we get that bounce, but I'm going to be just paying attention to price action and then reacting based on whatever happens. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I've been working all day, so uh, making this video was a little tiresome, but I do appreciate you guys liking, subscribing, doing all that good stuff. And I hope you guys have all the luck in the world trading the rest of the week. And I hope you have a good night. Peace.